Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be looking at the Angel's Envy line of spirits. Angel's Envy has released two bourbons and a rye. Now they do special things as far as the finishing on these. Uh, the bourbon was finished in port wine barrels. Um, what this is is just a cast strength version of this one. So this one was the original, released at 86.6 proof. Uh, the second release, they actually switched gears from this port wine finished bourbon to a rye finished in Caribbean rum casks. Now they bottled this one at 100 proof, so they stepped it up a little bit. Tremendous spirit. Uh, when Lincoln Henderson was interviewed and he talked about selecting the casks for this one, he talked about how he went through hundreds of rums to find the perfect rum to finish this rye whiskey in. And he talked about how the cask had previously came, contained cognac before it held rum. So he almost felt like it was getting an influence of both into this rye whiskey, which I must say is an amazing, uh, huge uh, floral and flavorful rye. It's not like your typical rye. It goes beyond that. It's got a lot of Christmas spices in it, a lot of nutmeg, I remember that. And so that's very unique. I'm not sure how it's going to mix in cocktails, but as far as a sipping rye, I would not mind having that in my glass. So, last year, they released the Big Brother, the cast drink version of their port wine finished bourbon. Bottled at 123 proof. Uh, it was a limited edition. So limited, in fact, that it was only like 1,500 bottles released, and it only made it into two markets, and they were instantly gone uh, within just a few days. So, this year, they released between 4,000 and 4,200 bottles of it, and it made it into eight markets. So if you were in Massachusetts, Kentucky, California, New York, Tennessee, Texas, Illinois, uh, or Florida, you have your shot at the cast strength bottling. Um, price point is going to be anywhere between 140 and maybe uh, 180. I'm hoping they don't go above that. That's really starting to price gouge there. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what I think about it and if it's really worth uh, stepping up over the original uh, release. All right. Now, quickly about the creator. Lincoln Henderson is the mastermind behind this. His signature is on every bottle. And he was the master distiller there at Brown Foreman for 40 years. He is a legend in the bourbon industry. He was elected to the Bourbon Hall of Fame. He was responsible for the creation of Woodford Reserve, uh, Gentleman Jack, uh, Single Barrel Jack Daniels, uh, Old Forester. I mean, he worked on many, many uh, great quality products. And to me, it was like the perfect uh, fitting tribute for him to go out on this bottle. Of course, you see the angel wings on the cast uh, strength box that that one comes in, but every bottle has the angel's wings on the back. Um, uh, he had retired in 2004. His son Wes had come to him and said, hey, I need help with this new thing I'm trying to work on. So in 2006, he came out of retirement and helped him select the barrels for these products. Now, I'm not sure what else they have aging or what else they have in store for us, but I'm hoping uh, with his passing that does not mean the end of this line because I think they're doing a really good job on it. So let's go ahead and get started with the 86.6 bourbon finished in port wine barrels. Just a medium to low amount of alcohol on the nose. A lot of brown sugar and cinnamon. A little bit of vanilla. A medium amount of oak. And a lot of berries. So I'm getting like strawberry, raspberries, maybe some plums in here as well. So very, very fruity coming off that amount of time in that port wine barrel. Now I'm going to nose the cast strength uh, version of it. Because I'm not expecting to find too many more uh, aromatics, but we'll see. much much sweeter brown sugar has gone through the roof on this one cinnamon spice is still there it doesn't feel as dramatic a change as the sweetness level is the oak is still there the vanilla all the berries and the in the plum is still sitting right there as well Very, very nice. Okay. Now I'm going to switch gears onto this rye. Wow. 
it's full of what I first thing I think when I hit it is nutmeg. A lot of nutmeg, a lot of uh, clove in this one. The rye whiskey is definitely in there. It's lending a lot towards the spice note of cinnamon as well. There's also the big floral influence coming off that grain. So much so that it almost feels like perfume. And it's very creamy and rich. It almost feels like a, almost like a Christmas eggnog. Very, very nice. Uh, I'm not sure how well that's going to mix because it is so unique. Uh, but as far as a sipper, um, I think that's tremendous right there on the nose. All right, let's get to the actual tasting. And let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and start with the lowest proof, the 86.6 bourbon. About a medium viscosity. It's not really thin, but it's not really oily. It comes, starts to get pretty sweet right up front, but never gets really sweet. Uh, there is a fair amount of touch of brown sugar, a touch of caramel, a good vanilla note, note coming through right before the cinnamon spice kind of peaks in the in right in the middle and then it finishes um, that with a really nice long lengthy uh, fair good amount of oak coming through as well the fruits show up mid palate along with the cinnamon spice kick that I got They might actually show up just before it, because when you first enter, it's it's pretty soft, it's sweet, a little bit of sweetness, and then you get the fruits, the plums, the raspberries, and the strawberries. Yep. And then you get that cinnamon spice swell, and then the long, lengthy oak. Almost a little bit of tobacco. Luckily, with that amount of water in it, it's not really drying out. That little touch, I mean, and it's just the slightest touch of tobacco on the finish. Dries out just a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. I'm going to go ahead and step up, even though this is a big jump into this 123, and then we'll finish off on that rice since it's so powerful on the, on the uh, spices. Probably gonna need to add a little water to this one. I'm trying it neat without any water. It feels a little bit restrained uh, without the water. I've tried it both ways, as you can see by the level there. Um, I can say that on this one, the brown sugar note is fuller. Um, it almost has a maple syrup feel to it. Um, viscosity wise not the oiliest bourbon I've ever had but it's up there um, of course even though the bourbon's only aged eight years in the traditional uh, new oak um, barrels and then gets almost three years more the 11 years of aging I'm not sure if it's lending enough to it to give it that really oily feel that you would find on pretty old bourbons but it's enough and it's really working well Wow, it is cinnamon spice even more intense on that mid palate that's where the water is going to come in and really help kind of bring that spice note down um, but the brown sugar is there the vanilla is there um, the caramel is still there the fruits the raspberries and the plum is still there the oak doesn't feel as drying, even though it's 123 proof. It 
it just doesn't feel as drying on that finish as this one did. I don't know if that's because the flavors are so big and there's so much going on that your mouth is, you know, salivating and that it's not letting it dry out. But a very lengthy finish. Almost a little bit of char on that finish as well. Get that barrel influence coming through really nicely on that fin on the end. Okay. So that's what we got there on the cast rank. Okay, back to 100 proof rye. Wow. Wow. The rye grain really coming through. That's the first thing you notice is how you still have that, that really nice... I don't know how to explain it. It's like how you get corn in a really good bourbon. Um, when Sometimes when they're a little young, you can get a little too much corn. But this one, you get the nice rye, almost like a rye bread right up front. And then right behind the rye is a very uh, sweet influence all the way throughout. And then you get the nutmeg and the clove coming in, cinnamon as well. The whole thing for 100 proof is very, very smooth, very palatable, floral notes coming through right there in the mid palate, and it doesn't feel as oak driven as the bourbons did. Um, as far as the actual fruit flavors on it. Maybe some plums as well. But it's mostly about the sweetness and the spice in this one. It's all about sweet spice. Um, as far as my enjoyment, I really enjoy the rye. I do enjoy the cast strength bottle. Price point's a little steep. Um, I think the best value is going to be the rye. And, you know, if you could only go this route, I don't think you'll be that disappointed. Um, if you can find this one. I think it's worth having, uh, not only as a collector's item, but as a really high quality bourbon. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching another one of my YouTube videos. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.